Hey folks, welcome to another Triple T Tuesday. Uh, for those new to this, this is uh, Tools, Tips, and Talk. Uh, so today we're going to cover some new projects that are coming up. Um, so let's start that out. So one of the first things is this stainless steel thresher knife. Um, thresher is one of the models that, um, that I've been working on, uh, basically a hunting knife. But this one is AEBL stainless, so this will be my first uh, full stainless steel knife. So excited about that one. This one's already been heat treated and uh, tempered uh, dead straight. So uh, really happy how this is coming out. Next one, uh, also same model, but this one is a stainless steel San Mai uh, with 1080 in the center. So you'll see a video of this one coming up too. Also really happy how this one's coming out super straight. Um, beautiful pattern on the edge so uh, looking forward to seeing how that's going to turn out the next project that I'm working on uh, something I'm going to keep a little under wraps you'll see it in a video um, but uh, here I'll show a video uh, a clip from the video on what that is you guys figure out if you know where I'm going with this uh, put it put a comment down in the comments and let me know what you think this is uh, and I'll give you a hint this is just a tool to build what I'm building. So tell me what you think this is. Uh, I think it'll be a pretty exciting project. I built this on the mill, so that's a lead into our discussion on today's tool, which is the milling machine. Uh, and I know not everyone has a milling machine, um, but it's one of my favorite tools in the shop. Uh, think of a milling machine like um, a big Etch-a-Sketch for adults. Uh, so let's go a little more into the milling machine. I'll take you over there, we'll talk about it. Um, and take you through it. So here we are at the milling machine. Um, this one is a vertical mill, okay? You'll notice that it's vertical. It's not like a lathe. Um, this one is a Precision Matthews mill. It's a pretty good mill for hobbyist um, um, mills, and we'll talk about what the important parts are for a mill. But first off, what is a mill? What does it do? For those that don't know, think of a drill press that you can basically have the cutter go down and go sideways. So it's like a big Etch-a-Sketch. It lets you do what's termed subtractive engineering, meaning you're going to take a piece of metal, put it in here, and you're going to subtract uh, metal from it using a cutter to get the part that you want. Some important parts of a milling machine that you want to have, the, one of the first things is mass. You want it to be heavy, you want it to be solid, because you don't want any vibration, you don't want any um, movement in the mill. That will give you more precision. Uh, next thing is you really want this thing to have variable speed. This mill will go up to 20, 2200, sorry, 2500 RPMs, variable all the way down to you can see it's barely spinning and I can make it go even slower. The bigger the cutter, the slower you want your mill to go. The smaller the cutter, the faster you want, generally want it to go. Some other features of this mill, okay, it has obviously your Y, your X to move the, the table, okay, you're moving the table, the cutter stays still and then it also it also has a Z axis and a quill, similar to, turn this off, similar to um, your drill press, okay? One key feature of a mill that you really should look for in a hobby mill is make sure it has a Z. Uh, a lot of them will just have the quill. Um, it's good to have a Z. You can bring this up really high, really low, um, if you want to. Um, you could even put a drill chuck in here if you want to use it as a drill. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. And you can see I've got quite a bit more height left to go on this. So we can go up quite a bit higher. So let's talk about the tooling for these. So um, unlike a drill, first of all, before we get into tooling, let's talk about those in the watching this saying, well, I have a drill press. Why don't I just do this with a drill press and put one of these cutters in my drill press? Your drill press is meant to only go down. It's only built to do downward pressure. It will not take 
any kind of pressure on a tool going left, right, uh, up and down, or left and right axis. Okay, you will snap the tool, um, you will break your drill press. The um, Jacob's chuck, those three pin chucks, are not meant to hold tools. The big difference between uh, a mill is they hold these, okay? This is called a collet. And the collet, there's different size collets. You use a different size collet for whatever you're using. You can see this is a 3 16 You can put a 3 16 tool in here or a 3 16 drill bit if you wanted to. Um, this gets clamped in here and this piece up here, there's a bar that runs through it and this tightens down and it pulls the collet up into it and constricts this piece and tightens down on your tool. And you can see all of the metal you have around that tool to give you some support when it's doing X and Y operations. So that's a big difference between a mill. Uh, don't try to put a cutter in your drill press. It just won't work. So let's talk about cutters. So this is a typical end mill, okay? In this end mill, I'll get a little closer here. This is a four flute, okay? You can see it's got four tines here. A four flute end mill. And you'll get different numbers of flutes for different kinds of material. The four flutes are generally for harder materials. Uh, this is a solid carbide end mill. So this, is, this will cut hardened steel, okay? If you were using uh, aluminum or brass, you'd want two flutes in order to evacuate the chips more. Some other tooling you can get, um, you can put something like this. This is a, a surfacing tool and it's got little inserts. You can see there's little carbide inserts here. And this is for obviously doing a really large piece. Um, this mill really kind of doesn't have enough torque um, for this tool. I mean, it works, but it, there's a bit of chatter and it doesn't really do that well so it wasn't really a good purchase but i don't use it very often uh the other thing of course is a jacobs chuck okay if you want to do precision drilling you can put this and it's got the same you notice it's got the same taper as the collet this is an r8 taper and different mills have different tapers um so this is an r8 um Jacob's chuck, and you can use this just like a drill press. Um, why would you want to use this instead of your drill press? Well, if you needed a, a very specific pattern of holes in your piece, um, you could do that with the mill. So one of the aspects of the mill is precision. So you can see here that there are some markers on this dial, and you can use this to tell you two ten thousandths so you could use this to tell exactly how far you're moving the table. Um, that's okay, there's a bunch of other problems I won't get into with doing that manually. Um, but what you really want is one of these. So what this is, is a DRO, or digital readout. And the nice thing about this is you don't need to do the manual um, aspects of the dial. I'm going to move the X here and you can see it's precise. Look at the precision. Pass a thousandths all the way to, to ten thousandths. So you can get very precise when you move your table. So this is great. It also has memory. Um, it has some calculations. You can do things like bolt patterns. Okay, if you wanted to, I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's a little bolt pattern. So it will calculate bolt patterns for you and you don't have to go and calculate where this would be. Probably the best addition to a mill is to get a DRO. Totally recommend it. And I use the little calculator function all the time. Uh, you can just flip this, do a little calculation, flip back, and it's exactly where you were. So super important to have a DRO. Um, talking about precision, it's not actually part of the mill, but one of the things you want is a good vise. And I don't mean, you know, don't buy a $40 vise at Home Depot and expect that it's going to perform. 
Okay, this is a precision piece of machinery. You need a precision vise. This is a $250 vise. Um, you want it precise so that you can put your parts in it and know that it is completely even with the mill. You have to, when you put this mill in, you have to make sure that it's square with the vise. So all kinds of things to do with that. So what do we do with the mill? What, what kind of operations do, um, you know, do knife makers new, do with a mill? The most obvious one is slots and guards. You'll hear a lot of people say, yeah, I want to get a mill for that. Um, I definitely do it for that. Other things, um, shoulders on knives. Great for the mill. Um, you know, some people use a filing guide and they'll file their shoulders down. Use a mill. It's way more precise and it's easier. Uh, you, and it's quicker. You just lock your knife in the vise, mill both sides, you're done. Uh, and you can do it after heat treat, okay? Because you put a carbide end mill in here, like this guy, you'd probably use a little smaller one. Um, and then you can mill the shoulders after heat treat, even after you've sanded it if you want. Um, but um, really good operation to do there. Other things I use the mill for, fullers. Um, I'll show you a video in the corner here uh, of using a fuller. Precision holes, like I mentioned. Uh, one of the things I plan on doing, just because I think it'll look cool, is to take a piece of Damascus, put it in here, and do very symmetrical holes and do a raindrop pattern. Instead of kind of random holes, to do them very, very symmetrically uh, in a pattern laid out. So I'm, I'm going to do that at some point. Another thing to use with the mill is not just necessarily making something, but sometimes you want parallelism. You want things to be parallel. And the mill is really great at that, because if you mill one side, you know that's flat. As soon as you flip it over, put it back in the vise, and mill the other side, you know those two sides are parallel. So that's very useful in a lot of operations. I do that all the time when I'm doing a guard. Before I drill the slot, I make sure the two sides are parallel so that I can just indicate um, the two sides of that part and then there's a center function on your DRO and you can guarantee the slots in the center. Lots of cool operations you can do. Obviously, once you get a mill, you're gonna think of all kinds of things to do with it, especially building tools. Like, the, like what I showed earlier in the little video, I want you guys to figure out in the comments what it is. That's a tool for building something else. So lots of great uses for the mill. Um, you know, this one was shipped to my house with the vise, I think was right around $3,000 with tax. So not a cheap piece of machinery, but super useful. I use this all the time. Honestly, for knife makers, um, as opposed to the lathe, which was gifted to me, I love, you know, that I have a lathe, I actually don't use it very often. Um, there's not a lot of parts, um, a lot of things to do on a mill, sorry, on a lathe compared to what I do on the mill. I use the mill almost for every blade, um, especially every hidden tang blade when I know I need shoulders to mill. Hey folks, thanks for joining me on this Triple T Tuesdays. I hope you got something out of it. I know not everybody has a mill, but believe me, they're super fun to play with. Stay tuned to see these build videos of these new projects coming up, hopefully in the next week. We'll see how I can finish them, uh, and I'll see you on the next one.